Hey everyone, so in today's video what I'm going to be doing is going through why I don't really worry about OLED burning too much. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it won't uh, ever occur and that it's something that doesn't happen, however it is something that I don't worry about as much because of what I've actually learned from this particular set um, that I've owned for quite some time. So this TV that you're looking at is a LG PS3000, I believe the model number is. It's a 50 inch plasma TV that I actually bought in 2009. Now, the reason this is relevant is because very much like OLED, um, plasma is obviously also uh, a technology that is um, susceptible to image retention as well as burning. Now, what I'll do is if I just hit play and whilst I'm actually running through this particular test, what you'll probably find is the colors will look completely off when it gets to white. That's just something to do with the way that um, the camera's refresh rate as well as the, uh, the TV's refresh rate. So you can see the lines going down. None of those are actually in the picture. That's just the, the refresh rate of the camera. So yeah, here, as you get to the, the white, as you can see, it's it's got a yellow kind of banding. I'm not sure what, what that is, but I've tried all the refresh rates on the camera and all of them seem to have it. But essentially, if I if I just come in, um, maybe it's because I'm locking the, uh, the brightness level, but essentially what's, what's happening is this particular TV is as I say it's probably what 2009 so 11 years old now and if you look at it just uh, let me see if I can actually try and get this to focus a bit better what I might have to do is just come out of it lock the focus and then I'll run that again and once we get to the same spot uh, in fact yeah just carry on so once you get to a dark screen just around here what you should be able to see is just a a ghosting of um, what was on screen previously. Um, I know the, the red's gonna look completely orange, but that's unfortunately what I have to do to try and get the colors right. But essentially coming back to the point, um, plasma technology and OLED, they're very similar in the fact that they, they had the same kind of um, problems in the sense that image retention was really bad. On, on plasmas in particular, it was really, really bad. So as you may or may not have seen, what I'll do is I'll just go back to this screen and I'll leave it on this screen for a little while. And what you'll notice is when I first start the, the test, this will actually be very visible. All of these kind of uh, playlists, marked as watch, it will be very visible. Um, and that's image retention, not burning. This particular set, what I actually did was when, when I first purchased this, I actually bought two of them. Um, I bought two PS3000s and there was also a, a higher model, which was the PS6000. Um, the only difference between the two was the fact that if you, uh, the PS6000 actually, you could plug in a USB stick and it'll actually play back media. Um, that was just a setting that I actually got the engineer's remote and I actually changed that. So this essentially is uh, a PS6000. But that's besides the point. Um, what I'll do is I'll run this from the start now. And what you should be able to see just there, in fact, even on this, this you might even see a little bit of ghosting from, from that. But basically what happens is it retains bright objects anywhere where there's been bright um, images on screen it'll retain that into the the kind of memory um, and it will take a little while before the pixels actually uh, refresh and on plasmas in particular what happens is if you've got a fully dark scene and you've got say a logo in the top right until something bright then gets to that same spot and actually changes whatever that that uh, ghosting was it'll, it'll just remain there very faintly but it'll, it'll remain there now OLED is obviously very similar in the sense that and what you might see is this bearing in mind this is an 11 year old set and the only thing that is noticeable is a little bit of vertical banding that isn't actually noticeable during content it's only actually visible during this type of um, test I'm actually running it's probably going to be more so uh, prevalent in in the next test I actually do but if I actually come in here come into all the normal kind of areas what you'll notice or hopefully not notice is any type of burning and for a plasma tv that's 11 years old that the primary use for this tv has actually been um sports 
Um, it's been heavily used for movies as well, but this this set in particular was the one that is uh, was in the place of uh, my now LG TV. So this the primary use for this particular set was sports. So I would have always had a logo in the top right hand corner, and it would have always been um, playing back those kind of. Well, I'll just run this blooming test, and it'll it'll just kind of hopefully show up. Once this goes off, you, you should just be able to see a little bit of the ghosting, just there, so just there. It's very, very faint, but you can, you can just about make it out. But in order to get this particular TV to last as long as it did, what I actually did was, um, so for the first two to three months, what I did was I actually had um, everything turned down. So turn the contrast down, turn the brightness down, um, all of those kind of things, um, adjusted everything. Um, ran it like that for a little while, allowed it, and you can just about see all along here, that's that's basically the image retention, uh, just there and just there. This kind of banding that you're getting going down the screen, the wave, that's just the refresh rate, so ignore that, that's not actually visible to, to the eye. Um, but on this screen itself, I can see loads of little, little bits of writing. If I just try and crank, uh, no, that doesn't help. Maybe if I turn down, no. No, it won't really rep replicate it on on camera. But basically, there's there's little, little bits of ghosting. Now, the thing about this particular TV was, um, it was really good for movies because, as you can see from this blooming test, although it's got little bits of memory retention and that itself was just an artifact from the camera itself even though it's got this this kind of uh, image retention here around the actual blooming dots um there's no actual uh real bl uh, blooming um it's got a tiny little bit around it that's probably more so the uh the camera not being able to pick it up right let's try it there but in terms of the actual picture itself, it's not like the old LEDs of the time where you would have had massive clouds of uh, blooming all in the corners or in certain areas, maybe at the top of the screen, bottom of the screen, shining light up. This was very much um, a prelude to what, what the uh, OLED technology actually gave us in the sense that it gave us this, but without this kind of um, grey uh, screen. And the greyness um, you have to kind of uh, ignore to an extent because the reason it looks like that is because I've actually got an anti-reflective coating on this particular screen, this one and also my other 50-inch uh, plasma. Um, and the reason I added those was because of where these were originally kept. And basically, they, um, I bought it came as a set. It came from America, the film that I actually put on top of it. And because of that, basically, I just put added it to both of them and I ended up leaving it on there. But essentially, this TV, 11 years old, uh, plasma TV. Any of these kind of, and this this will be a good test because when that goes off, if I was to go back to a black screen, it will show subtitles text test there. But as soon as any bright um, content comes on, if I then go back to a bl uh, black screen, it'll be gone again. So the fact that I've managed to make these last 11 years plus, and it was only for maybe the first two to three years that I was actually mindful of, of the fact that these are these are what they are. Um, this one was my p personal TV, so this one was either here in my bedroom or it was downstairs in the uh, front room, movie room, as we, as we like to call it. And the other one was the one that the kids used, and that one basically they they would leave um, things running on it all day long. They left uh, stuff just paused in the background, stuff like that. So, and this, by the way, it's the the screen isn't really changing as much as what you're seeing. That's more so what the camera is actually doing. Let me just see if I can try and lock that in. The point here is any technology that you buy, um, as long as you mitigate any particular risks, then you can make any any particular type of technology work for you. And it is that is pretty much what it is as well. You do have to be mindful and you do have to kind of think about what it is that you're actually using. It's been brought up that OLED technology is something that you should never consider. Um, it's not something that um, should be recommended to anybody and th things like that. Whereas 
in in reality it's as long as you're looking after it and you're doing the right things um, there's no reason why the, these sort of technologies shouldn't be able to last for quite a while and that's pretty much the the point of this video the fact that if if this particular tv which is 11 years old it has a, a worse type of t uh, technology in it the plasmas were a lot more prominent to burn in and image retention now one of the things that i did actually like about the old plasma tvs was the fact that we, it's partly what's actually given me so many problems on this particular video is the fact that because of the the refresh rate and I think this this particular TV is something like a hundred Hertz panel or something like that That's why it's not really fitting in with any of the um, The frame rates that I've actually tried 24 30 or 60 But it meant that it was really good for sports and things like that. Um, it had film mode so you could disable the soap opera effect um, Had no problems watching movies back anything like that, but it's just the fact that it had those problems with it so it did have those uh, common p problems of image retention and burning and as long as you were mindful and you weren't um, silly in terms of how you actually handled and uh, dealt with the TV as you can see it has got the logo there um, as soon as I go to a white screen uh, or bright screen it'll then get rid of that and the next time it comes to a dark screen it will no longer be there but these are things that obviously because over time of me having used it and experienced the the panel and everything um, I've got used to it um, with when I actually went from this I actually went to the uh, TCL edge LED TV and that for me was a lot worse in terms of um, movie experience mainly because in, in bright scenes obviously it, it looks fantastic the the tcl does um any anything bright content um they've, they've done a really good job with very sharp um good colors but when it came to any dark content i actually preferred the plasma to to the 4k um and that was probably what tempted me to actually look into the the the, the higher tier of tvs and also the the q90r and the C9 were the the two options that I was actually looking at and I opted for the C9 primarily because it's it's very similar to these and it just gave added benefits of having the perfect blacks um, the colors were so rich everything so vivid um, better game mode um, everything about it obviously I've got a separate video on why I actually chose the C9 um, on my channel so if, if you want to go check that out um, links uh, should be at the end of the video but if not it'll, it'll be in the TV uh, an audio uh, playlist that I've actually got on my channel so you can go check that out if you haven't already done so please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified about any new uploads that I do and as always thanks for watching